O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes. And the primal cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance and destruction of manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods. By him, even the great sages and demigods. Are placed into illusion. Are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire, land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction with three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. And therefore, meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna. Therefore, I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of material world. I meditate upon Him, for He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Him, for He is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitrovotra. Dharma projita kaitabutra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon muvanam. Shivadam tapa trayon muvanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Pareer Ishwaraha. Kimva Pareer Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra. Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra. Krite Behe Sususa Bistakshanat. Krite Behe Sususa Bistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. And the highest truth that reality distinguishes from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such is true of the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kapotorur galitam falam. Nigama kapotorur galitam falam. Sukamakad amrita dravya samgita. Sukamakad amrita dravya samgita. Vibhata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Vibhata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur aho raska bhuvi bhavu kaha. Mohur aho raska bhuvi bhavu kaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, including liberated souls, 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Sangvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyam Takstohi Abhadrani Hidyam Takstohi Abhadrani Vidu Nati Surit Satam Vidu Nati Surit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita Is it self-righteous activity it is self-righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. For one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best-wishing friend. Acts as a best-wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Chaita itara navidam. Chaita itara navidam. Sthitvam sattve prasiddhati. Sthitvam sattve by development of devotional service, development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogitaha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in the pure, position of pure becomes goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante chasya karmani. Chidyante sarva karmani. Drista evat manishwari. Evat manishwari. Thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees and Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 1, chapter 17, verse number 5. Kastvam macharane loke. Kastvam macharane loke. Baladam syabalam bali. Baladam syabalam bali. Nada Devo Siva Sena Nada Devo Siva Sena Natavat Karmana Dvija Natavat Karmana Dvija Translation by Srila Prabhupada Oh, who are you? You appear to be strong and yet you dare kill within my protection. Those who are helpless by your dress you pose yourself to be a godly man, king, but by your deeds, you are opposing the principles of the twice-born Kshatriyas. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas are called twice-born because for these higher classes of men, there is one birth by parental conjugation, and there is another birth of cultural rejuvenation by spiritual initiation from the bona fide acharya or spiritual master. 
So a Kshatriya is also twice born like a Brahmana, and his duty is to give protection to the helpless. The Kshatriya king is considered to be the representative of God to give protection to the helpless and chastise the miscreants. Wherever, whenever, there is an incarnation of the Lord to reestablish the principles of godly kingdom. In the age of Kali, the poor helpless animals, especially the cows, which are meant to receive all sorts of protection from the administrative heads, are killed without restriction. Thus, the administrative heads under whose noses such things happen are representatives of God in name only. Such powerful administrators are rulers of the poor citizens by dress or office, but factually they are worthless, lower class men without the cultural assets of the twice born. No one can expect justice or equality of treatment from the once born spiritually uncultured, lower class men. Therefore, in the age of Kali, everyone is unhappy due to the maladministration of the state. The modern human society is not twice born by spiritual culture. Therefore, the people's government by the people who are not twice born must be a government of Kali in which everyone is unhappy. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Well, there you go. This explains why everyone's unhappy in America today. The only people that are happy are the crazy people. They don't understand that they're suffering. So, uh, what do they do? They take drugs. And nowadays, there's so many drugs. There are legal drugs and there are illegal drugs. And sometimes the illegal drugs are made legal drugs. So that's the uh, tragedy of modern society in which low-class people vote to put in another low-class person in a position of high authority with power, with uh, money, and with an army of uh, federal troops and, and uh, police, and security units and so forth. There are many, there are many different uh, m militias in the federal government, legal militias. It's not just the police and the, and the army. There are other agencies uh, of the federal government that carry guns and shoot people. So when, when a low-class person has so much power, nobody is happy because they, they're coming with their low-class habits. Like, for example, Obama, he, he liked to smoke and eat meat. Clinton liked to eat meat also, but when he had his heart attack, he became a vegan for a short while. See? And Trump loves meat, so, so Bush also he loved, loved meat. They sleep with a burger on their pillow. They just want to sniff it, you know. So this is a tragedy for uh, the common people who suffer because of such uh, leaders. <clears throat> so here it says that people who are not twice born, who become leaders of society, just cause unhappiness. And, and the first victims are the cows and bulls and then so many other animals. And then babies in the womb of the mother, and then elderly people who are sick, and then anybody uh, is, is a victim of uh, their uh, misuse of power. So now in the uh, election that's going on, one candidate is saying, the other candidate has, has messed up this whole uh, COVID and so many people are dying because of him. Well, the death rate is not that bad for the virus. It's, there, is a lot, there are a lot of deaths, but if you count, if you actually take a look at how many people die every year in the United States, do you have any idea? Do you have any idea how many people die every year? It's over 8 million people, okay? 
and already uh, 600 million people die of heart, I mean 600,000 people die of heart attacks. Uh, 500,000 people die of cancer. Did they close the uh, economy because so many people are dying of cancer and heart attacks? No. Then you have over 100 to 150,000 people that die of overdoses of drugs. Did you know this? It's very interesting. I mean, how do you get to 8 million? I mean, obviously there's people that die of old age, right? But a lot of people are dying. I mean, Every year, there's 20 to 40,000 people that die from the flu. Right? Sometimes it's even more than that. So it'd be very interesting to see how many people die in 2020. Any bets? You have any bets? I bet that it's not more than any normal year. It's, uh, so who's going to be in charge of uh, checking this figure? Okay, Prabhu, you, 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 vol you had your hand up a little bit. <laughs> so you, first of all, look at the last three years, how many people died in the United States? And look at how many people have died up to now in the United States? Or you might have to wait till the end of the year, but, but they should be able to tell you how many people have died. They're just telling you how many people die of COVID, the China flu. And that's about 230,000 people so far. But I, I bet, now I don't, I don't you know, we, sh we shouldn't gamble, so I'm not gonna bet any money. But, <laughs> but I bet that the number of people who die this year is not more than any other year in the United States. So we'll see if that's true or not. Okay, so uh, that does not give any excuse for the validity or invalidity of the leaders of this country because they're not twice born. Uh, your first birth is a seminal birth, and the second birth is spiritual birth. And spiritual birth, which many of you have uh, already done, you make uh, vows. You know, no meat eating, no gambling, no illicit activities, no intoxication, and chanting minimum 16 good rounds of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra every day. Now this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is very, very important. We are always mentioning that. And the reason is that one can quickly become purified. In the Varnasram system, it's slow spiritual advancement. In Krishna consciousness, Daivi Varnash system, it's very quick purification. It can just be a matter of months or a matter of a few years, and one can be very, very cleansed. That doesn't mean the desire is not there, but it means that one feels an obligation not to satisfy those type of desires for sense gratification. Sometimes people slip, but by regular hearing and chanting and associating with good devotees, one's determination gets stronger and stronger until one loses all attraction to satisfying desires. That doesn't mean the desires go away. It's a question of satisfying them. So there are, there are three psychological steps before an action. There's thinking, feeling, and willing. So when you see something that you're attracted to, now that could be anything. That could be anything. It could be a a, an attractive person or an ugly person. Some people are attracted to ugly people. Look at these people who mutilate their body. They put like two big bumps that look like the devil's, uh, uh, look, make them look like a devil. They cut their lips, so it's, it's bifurcated, and they get special teeth that are, that are, uh, uh, that are uh, uh, made pointed by the dentist, so they look like a demon. They have tattoos, they have pins and needles and things sticking out of all places, their eyelid and their, their nose and their ears and all over the place. And they have uh, these big uh, military boots and they, and they have these belts with uh, silver, uh, all kinds of metal on them. They're walking down the street, you know, and you look at them and say, my God, what is that? You know, that's, that's like a demon. And they purposely want to look like a demon. 
And they have clubs. They have, they have organizations where they drink each other's blood. Did you know that? There are organizations like that in the United States where people drink each other's blood. <laughs> right, you can look it up. You'll find it. So uh, some people are attracted to it. They think that's beautiful. See? So therefore, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. See? It doesn't mean that someone has a, you know, a, no a nose that curves up and nice hair and nice skin is beautiful. Nowadays, the person whose lips are cut and has teeth like a tiger and has pins and needles in their head and has bumps and, uh, you know, they purposely mutilate themselves. Some people think that's beautiful. So this question of satisfying desires, there's three steps before one actually tries to satisfy a desire. So one looks at something, dahavato vishayam pumsa, sangat te subhajayate, sangat sanjayate kama, kama krodha vijayate. So everything begins by looking. When you look at something and without seeing its relationship to Krishna, the process begins. And you say, hmm, that thing looks really nice. And then this uh, thinking, feeling, oh, that would feel so nice to uh, be able to enjoy that thing. And that thing can be anything. It can be a, a snake. It can be a monkey. It can be a, a person. It can be a, a car. It can be a house. It can be anything. Right? And then thinking, feeling, and now willing. I have to have this thing, otherwise I won't be happy. And next step, you actually go for it. So Krishna consciousness acts on the level of thinking, feeling, and willing. So one, one can be thinking, oh, that thing looks pretty. And then one thinks, well, wait a minute. I should accept everything favorable for Krishna consciousness and reject everything unfavorable. Can I use this thing in Krishna's service? Well, I could. But actually, I want to enjoy it myself. But well, wait a minute. That's not the criterion. The criterion is accept everything favorable for Krishna consciousness. So if I want to enjoy this thing personally for sense gratification, that would not be favorable for Krishna consciousness. Therefore, and if I don't know how to use it in Krishna's service, therefore I leave it alone. So that's... Krishna consciousness acting on the level of thinking, feeling, and willing. Actually, before you even get to feeling, you stop. Or sometimes it goes to feeling, and you say, oh, it would be nice if I had this. But wait a minute, I can't really use this in Krishna's service. So therefore, I'm not going to touch it. You know? So there, those are the levels, especially in thinking and feeling. One can stop oneself from going to willing and not try and satisfy a desire. The desires don't stop. There's no question that desires are stopping because we're out in public and we're looking at things all the time and being attracted to something is not a strange thing. You know, somebody's attracted to a new set of dishes. You already have dishes. Someone says, oh, no, 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 look how pretty these dishes are, right? So then they spend like $300 buying a whole new set of dishes. And uh, I always tell the story of the man that goes to, his wife sends him to uh, Costco to buy some bananas. <laughs> but before he be reaches the bananas, he already buys a television and a lawnmower and a, you know, sit down lawnmower and all these other things. And he goes home and his wife says, you get the bananas? Said, oh my God, he said, I forgot. You know. <laughs> But I got television, I got a sit down loan more, and I bought a new car, and I bought a watch. You know. They were on sale. Yeah, yeah that's, that's Costco. However, it says, Apuryamanam achalam pratistam samudra apa pravisanti yadvat. Tadvat kama yam pravisanti sarve. Sasanti vaplanti nat kama kami. Second chapter, 70th verse. It says, a person who's not disturbed 
by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man or person who strives to satisfy such desires. So this is implying that throughout our whole life, so many desires are going to come into the mind. It's because of our seeing. But yet, we have to have a filter. That filter is accept everything that uh, one can use in Krishna's service and reject anything that's not usable in Krishna's service. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with much more water. But the ocean remains the same, steady. It is not agitated, nor does it cross beyond the limit of its brink. That is also true of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as one has the material body, the demands of the body for sense gratification will continue. You say, the demands of the body for sense gratification will continue. The devotee, however, is not disturbed by such desires because of his fullness. A Krishna conscious man is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the ocean, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like, act, like the waters of the river that flow into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities, and he is not even slightly disturbed by desires for sense gratification. That is the proof of a Krishna conscious man, one who has lost all inclinations for material sense gratification, although the desires are present. Because he remains satisfied in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, he can remain steady like the ocean and therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, who want to fulfill desires even up to the limit of liberation, what to speak of material success can never attain peace. The fruit of workers, the salvationists, and also the yogis who are after mystic powers are all unhappy because of unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the service of the Lord, and he has no desires to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The devotees of Krishna have no material desires, and therefore, they are in perfect peace. They have spiritual desires. Just like I've been desiring a long time to have a Goshala Mandir. Yeah. And yesterday, it opened up. It's a, it's <laughs> it doesn't cost a lot of money. I mean, this place costs, you know, three and a half, four million dollars, right? And Bellevue is costing uh, at least, uh, uh, if you add what we're going to spend now, six point five million dollars, right? But the Goshala Monday only costs like five thousand dollars, right? and. You can do preaching. You can do so many things. The cows are there. Cows are happy too. They were they're were, they were fascinated yesterday. They were looking around. What's going on here? All these people giving me bananas and this and that, and and they're singing. And then what's going on? You know, they were fascinated by it. And we did uh, kirtan right down to Devahuti and, and Rameshwar. And it, at first they were a little afraid. They didn't know what was going on. All these people came in with drums and cartels. But then they, they calmed down and, uh, you know, we sang for them. And they liked it. So people have desires, right? But if you have desires for Krishna, then you're not contaminated. And you will still have other desires, but you can stop them through Krishna consciousness, through your desire to keep your vows to Guru and Krishna your desire to continue in Krishna consciousness, it can overshadow all those desires. There was, there's a saying in my language that says, don't stretch your foot past your bedspread, or past your blanket, right? So there's a story that goes with it. Once upon a time, there was a mean king, and he would uh, kill people according to their uh, work. So 
he had already killed people who were delivering milk. So he, he, he uh, started going, started killing all carpenters in his kingdom. So what he would do is he'd, he'd give them a task to do, and he would make sure that they were not able to do it, and then he'd kill them. So uh, there was one young man who was very loyal to his father and very respectful. He was like a devotee. And uh, he was a carpenter, and his turn came to come in front of the king. The king wanted them to build a, a bed, and it had to be perfectly adapted to his body. And every time a carpenter would come in with a bed, the king would bring his blanket, and he said, let me test this bed. So he'd get, he'd get into the bed, pull the blanket over him, and then his foot would come out. He said, oh, it's too short, and they'd kill the carpenter. Now, this sounds like a silly story, right? But actually, now it's this boy's turn, and he was very, he was a happy boy, a happy man, but uh, he became very sad. And his father said, what's the matter? He said, oh, nothing, Dad. He said, no, no, I can see there's something wrong. What's, the, what's your problem? Why are you unhappy? He said, well, Dad, that's okay. I, I, I'm dealing with it. He said, no, 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 no. He said, I'm your father. I can see something is wrong. And you've always been obedient to me. Now, please tell me what's wrong. He said, well, Dad, you know, the king is such a mad, crazy man. He's given me an appointment to make a bed for him. And I know for sure he'll do some trick and kill me. And I'm just sad because, not because I'm, I'm afraid of dying, but uh, it'll hurt you and, and, and I don't know. Uh, I, I just feel very sad. He said, is that the only problem? He said, yeah. What do you mean the only problem? He said, I'm sure the king's going to kill me like he's killed so many other carpenters. He said, no, 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 look. I'm your dad, and I have a lot of experience. Now, you just listen to me and do what I tell you to do, and you will be okay. The boy said, I don't understand that. I said, of course you don't understand. Just listen to what I tell you. So the boy listened to what his father said, and he built a bed, and he took it to the king. And the king came out. He was all peppy. and said, oh, look at this bed. Maybe it's the right one, and maybe it's the wrong one. So he brought his blanket, you know, he put it on the bed, and he got in, and he said, huh, it looks like it fits. And then his foot came out. So, oh, it's too short. And as soon as his foot came out, the boy took out a big stick that he had in his coat, and he whacked the king's foot. And he said, don't stretch your foot beyond your blanket. And the king's foot came back in, and he was shocked. And he looked at the boy and said, who taught you that? He said, my father taught me that. He said, you have a good father. Because you listen to your father, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> so this is a story. And from, from that story came this proverb, don't stretch your foot beyond your, your blanket. So, <laughs> so these are like village stories. <laughs> but I had an uncle. And my uncle was a very disciplined person. And this was his favorite proverb. He would, <laughs> whenever anyone came to borrow money from him or to ask him a favor, he would always say this proverb. <laughs> and he would tell him, I can't do it because, you know, I'm, uh, I can't afford it or it's not a good idea, or, you know, he said, don't stretch your foot beyond your blanket. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all village wisdom, right? I'm sure in India you have the same yeah, thing. Exactly. We have. Yeah, exactly. uh, because when you know these proverbs, it's your ancestors speaking to you because they have a lot of experience in the past and they came up with these proverbs and Many of the proverbs are common amongst all different people. You know? So anyway, uh, in the same way, thinking, feeling, and willing, we have to learn to uh, stop them before they mature into acting. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Are there any questions?
Yes. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, as you have explained thinking, feeling and willing, so we try to stop at uh, think, um, feeling stage, like even uh, the thought is coming. You can stop at thinking, but you can stop at feeling also. Once you get to willing, it's really hard to stop. So, um, so but it, it requires a lot of tolerance as well um, you have to stop at um, feeling stage because desires are keep coming, those are like unwanted and and those are not um, favorable to but Krishna you know, consciousness. You have to have a criterion. The criterion is accept everything favorable for Krishna consciousness, reject everything unfavorable. Now, an, an advanced devotee can learn how to use anything in Krishna service, but not, uh, not all of us are advanced. You know, sometimes I don't know. I see something, I don't know how to use it in Krishna service, so I don't touch it. So, so my question is how to <coughs> how to tolerate it? Like uh, we are uh, trying to tolerate, but how to get a more strength to tolerate it? Like because they are like you ask they are coming. Advice. You ask advice from some spiritual authority, right? Okay. There are many things we don't understand. Yes. That's you know, when in doubt, always ask <laughs> Shiksha or Diksha Guru. Okay. Okay. That's our my my Latin teacher used to say in high school. When in doubt, do the right thing. But now we change that a little bit. When in doubt, ask Siksha or Diksha Guru. Okay, Maharaj. Well. Any other questions? Okay, of course, Srila Prabhupada.